That epic tale of numero finis and denominators sure was a hoot. But what are the consequences of a numero fini victory? I mean when the polynomial on top has larger degree than the polynomial on bottom. Here we see, ooh, that's a third degree polynomial. Sounds pretty dangerous. That's a second degree polynomial. That's a large degree, so we're gonna get a slant asymptote C, sometimes called oblique. Oh, because really works the obliques. Okay, no, yeah. <laughs> um, we gotta go old school. We put x to the third minus x squared minus 24x plus 21 in the house. We put x squared plus 20, ooh, that's a four. Uh-huh, x minus four, sure. And then we ask ourselves, oh self, what do I multiply x squared by to get x to the third? And I heard it's gonna be a single x, and I put it above the x category. This is polynomial long division. And then I take this one times that one, put it there. X to the third. This one times that one, put it there. Plus 4x. This one times that one, put it there. Minus 4x. Hmm, that should have been squared. And then I change the sign. I like to circle it. Let's me know I changed it. And add down. Nothing. Ooh, minus and minus is minus 5x squared. Tw minus 24 plus 4 is a uh, minus 20x. And then I bring it on down. Plus 21. What am I going to multiply this guy by in order to get a minus 5x squared? A minus 5. So then I take this one times that one and put it there, minus 5x squared. This one times that one, put it there, minus 20, really? Perfect, x. And then this one times that one, put it there, plus 20, mm-hmm. And then I change the signs. I like to circle it, lets me know I changed it. And add down, nothing, nothing. Huh. One. So then what do I do? I put remainder over divisor, and that's this guy, plus one over x squared plus four x minus four. Sure. Now I'm looking at this. It's a rewrit of that fraction. Rewrote. Redone. Anyways, this guy is going to go to infinity. That's linear. That one is going to go to zero. So when we're talking about large and small values of x, the only thing that's going to matter is this part. And that's your sampler. That's your slant asymptote. That's why <laughs> the slant asymptote is y is equal to x minus 5. And you know how to do that. Tell you where to start. Tell you where to go. I know where to go. So my next example. Oh, this guy also has a slant asymptote because the numerator is bigger than the denominator. You know what? I'll alter it. Boom. I'll make it even bigger. Let's go oblique. That's twice bigger, which means you're going to get, oh, a parabolic and bigger. So I can go and I can throw that guy in her. I have a special linear factor in the denominator. With a special linear factor, you can synthetically divide. So that's why I put the zeros on the outside. Zeros on the outside. Coefficients on the inside. One. Oh. Oh. Seven. Menos. That's x to the third, x squared, x, and constant. What are we looking for? The remainder and the remaining polynomial in there. So I go and I drop it like it's hot. This times that. That's a minus five. Minus five. That's twenty-five. That's twenty-five. Oh! Big numbers! That's the stuff they don't like! 5 times 125 is minus 125. Oh boy. Then I add on down and I have a minus 132. Ooh. But the important part is my resulting polynomial. It's going to be x squared minus 5x plus 25. Oh my! Okay, plus the remainder, minus 132, over the divisor, x to the third, minus 7. So, this is going to be my oblique asymptote. And it's going to be some parabolic. I didn't graph this ahead of time, but a parabola ends there, 
and starts there, vice versa, starts, ends. And that's going to be the end behavior of <laughs> your polynomials callback oblique. Thank you.